Okay, so this is Windows 11 running on a Raspberry Pi 5 and we now have it running on an NVMe drive uh, thanks to a little tweak that it's had. You can see for internet I'm using this USB Ethernet adapter. Uh, for sound I'm using my USB sound card and uh, it actually feels really quite snappy now. It's definitely a lot better. Let's do a test on the NVMe drive and see how fast it is. So if we do a search for Crystal Disk Mark so let's download this zip file and just show you generally how it works, how, how swift it is and everything. So if we go to downloads and save that, you can see I've been downloading loads of things on here. I haven't had a lot of success with games because GPU support still isn't there. So let's open that up. Uh, in fact, if we go to that folder, we can unpack it. So extract all. And it really is nice and fast and just, just feels pleasant to use, whereas on the Pi 4 it always felt really too sluggish. Uh, it's actually really getting there now, uh, certainly for running programs and, and sort of more basic things. We've got loads of things here. I guess it's going to be this one, this Mark 64. Better close all this down. and Let's run that test. Okay, so we've got some results, so let's see if we can take a screenshot of that. There we go, copy to the clipboard. So let's open Paint and see if we can paste that in and save it. So just Control V work. Yes, it does. Right, let's just save that as a JPEG. You can see I, it actually works fine. Uh, so NVMe test one. Because I haven't changed anything, but I think you can get PCIe 3 speeds on this, so we should be able to get this even faster. If we go to the GitHub, so if we do Pi 5 UEFI, and we click on this one, let's just go full screen. Because if we scroll down, there is a bit on here about configuration. Yeah, PCIe connector is limited to Gen 2 speed by default, but you can go to Device Manager, Raspberry Pi configuration, PCI Express, and change the link speed. So let's close this down, and we can shut down here. And I pressed Escape on boot, and that gives me a few options, not many. So Device Manager, Raspberry Pi Configuration, PCI Express, ah here we go, so Gen 3, F10 to save, and yes, and escape to exit, and keep going and continue, and enter. Okay so it's booting up again, so I'm just going to leave it as it is, and it does boot up really fast. Now, see, I've got Ethernet connected. Now, if you're booting and you've got a USB Ethernet adapter and that shows up as uh, a symbol of the world, it generally means that it, for some reason, hasn't loaded up the USB correctly. And what I tend to find is if you either unplug the USB Ethernet adapter and plug it back in again, or unplug the Ethernet cable, you, you should get it to work. So let's just log in. Super, super fast. Right, so let's do that uh, check again, and let's start that. Oh, it's already way faster, <laughs> pretty much double the speed. And I thought it was quite fast before. Okay, so we have some results, so let's get that picture up again. And pop that over here. And let's have this back up next to it. So you can see here, if we compare them, uh, especially on the first test, uh, the read speed went from 424.30 up to 83107 and the write speed went from 39960 up to 57403. So it's made a big improvement and you can see right across the board all of the scores have gone up. So I'll definitely be leaving it on the PCIe 3 speeds. You might find that some drives don't seem to support it and that's the reason that they go for the sort of safer PCIe 2. And just have a quick look at the web browser and show you that Really that works well, so you can see that page came up really quickly. If I click on Hot UK Deals, it comes up nice and quick. If I open another web page and go to, what have we got on here, Yahoo News. 
that's nice and quick and BBC Sport there you go I think the Lionesses are playing tonight there'll be something about it here somewhere but yeah you can, the web browser is decent on this as it is in Chrome because they are both native ARM browsers which is really really good to see more of that should be coming to Windows in the future if we can get the GPU support that would make a massive difference um, also, uh, if I go back to the GitHub, so Pi 5 UEFI. So this is the bit that's that's kind of the BIOS uh, for the Raspberry Pi 5. This is the bit that it boots initially. Now, I still use it on SD card, but there are instructions in here uh, that you can run it all from the NVMe drive. The reason I still run it from the SD card is because when the next update of this comes out, I can just write it to an SD card and still boot from that, and it, it doesn't bother me. But if you want to do it from the NVMe drive, you can go to Issues and click on this Installation of Windows 11. You can see where someone's asked about instructions. And I'd answered saying about uh, my tutorial about Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 5. But at that time, I didn't have NVMe. The, the process is exactly the same, um, but there's one extra step you need to do. There's some, some extra files you need to download. So I'll show that a little bit later on in the video. And this is thanks to Mario Balanica for this uh, with these extra drivers. And I've just made a request on here for other resolutions. At the moment, we can only use 1920 by 1080, which definitely is a drain uh, on the system. It's a bit like if you've got like a mid-range PC and you try and run a 4K desktop, you'll see that it really slows down. So if we can lower this resolution down, it will definitely help us on gaming. That said, uh, I've put DuckStation on here, which is a PlayStation emulator. And this actually works all right. Obviously the PlayStation is an old system and doesn't really need GPU support. We go in here and launch it and I'm going to plug in a controller. So I've got my Xbox controller plugged in. So scan for new games. I've got my games on a USB stick and they're in here. So PlayStation and let's scan that. So we try a bit of Metal Gear Solid. I haven't played this for, for ages and I don't really know what the controls are, but I remember this on, on the PlayStation 1. I absolutely loved it. So we can crawl in through here, lad, and we've got to avoid the guys. Although I can't remember what I'm supposed to, am I supposed to attack them silently here? Here he comes. I don't know if he's going to look my way. And they're all right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that wasn't attacking him silently. I, don't, I think there's a way you can uh, sort of do his throat in. I wonder if I can get back and get under that. Can I crawl under again? Was it here? Oh, no, it was, was it here? I don't know where it was. Oh no, it's all right. They've left me alone. But you can see on this, uh, it is working fine. Look, this guy's not seen me yet. But I was quite pleased to get that working. So let's quit out of that and show you something else I've been playing around with. And that's Windows 98. So I've got on here PCEM, which is uh, like a virtual machine. And we can run Windows 98. And I've been playing around with settings and things like that. But because the desktop is running at 1920 by 1080, I think that's the major step that's making it not work. So you can see here, Pentium 2 with Voodoo 3. Just close this down. Um, and there's various different settings on this virtual machine. And in fact, I'm going to show the video I used because it was a really good tutorial. Is it on here? I was doing it on my iPad. Yeah, this one here, PCMU. So I've been using this quite a lot really, and, uh, and I've been really pleased with it. Obviously it's not as fast as Linux on a Pi 5. But uh, it's, it's definitely a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So this is the guide and it is really comprehensive, really goes through it well, all the different setups and things like that. And I have been trying some other kind of setups with hardware to see if I can get it working better. Um, but the great thing about this is all of the downloads are here. They're all labeled. It is, it's, a, it's a brilliant tutorial. Um, so I'll put a link in the description to that. But if I close this down and launch it. So you can see it will start off with the BIOS. And it has sound, the sound is working fine. 
and that's boot from hard disk. I've still got the uh, Windows 98 CD in there, or the virtual one. Now obviously on more powerful hardware, this will be really easy to run, um, but this is the Pi 5 running Windows 11 and then running Windows 98 in a virtual machine. But I reckon if we can get this desktop resolution down to 640 by 480, I think it will be usable. And we can go into video and we can go full screen. And there's that familiar sound. So if we press the Windows key, you can see that it comes up, but it is slow. Uh, and uh, I haven't really installed anything on here, um, but I just wanted to see if it worked. I'd, uh, I'd kind of bookmarked PCEM a while ago, and I just wanted to try it out and see what it was like. But it may be a step too far for the Pi 5, but maybe not if we can lower that resolution. I think that might make quite a big difference to it. So if I hit uh, function, alt, and page end, yeah, that brings it down into this small screen. And I can shut that down in the normal way. There we go. And I played around with the settings in here, but I was playing around with some of these. And you can you can choose some of these, and you can go right down to uh, a DX266, which for some of the games that I wanted to play, well, my first computer was a Pentium 75. So uh, you know, there's there's an option there anyway but I'll put it back because I know it's working on this at the moment and I'm hoping that we will be able to get 640 by 480 with Windows on Raspberry Pi 5 and that might make the difference. So let's quit out of all that. And I'll shut this down and uh, I'll boot up on a Windows PC and show you how to add those extra files to get it running from an NVMe drive. Okay, so I've got a new Maker disk and if I pop that into this little Oreco Caddy to write the image, and then I need this USB-C, plug that in. So it's going to be exactly the same process as this video, the Raspberry Pi 5, how to install. But if you're doing it to an NVMe drive, you're going to need to add some extra files. So if we go to the WOR tool, as in my video, and run that as administrator, and yes, and next. And here we need to pick our drive. So this will be the Maker Disk 120 gig. We need to tell it it's a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 and hit next. The image file must be this image here. Yeah, that's the one. So hit next and install. The installation has completed, so I can hit finish. And I've shut down my mini PC, so let's unplug it from here. And I'm going to plug it into this Pi, but I'm going to plug it in uh, running Linux. So this was the Windows I was running just now. So I've got Linux on here. I just find it easy to do it this way. And let's plug everything in. Okay, so that's booted up Linux. So now I can plug my drive in. So this is the one I've just written Windows 11 to. So back to the GitHub i5 uefi and the instructions for the extra files we need to add for the nvme are in issues installation scroll down through and this is the file you need to download storage for zip and we need to know where to put it and it actually says here windows system drivers so let's go to our downloads and we'll open that up and we need to extract these four files. So I'll put it in a folder, let's call it win 11 fix NVMe and hit OK. And let's close down the unarchiver. And here we have the folder, so let's double click on that. You can see I've got four files here. Let's copy those. And we need to go to the Windows partition and we need to go to Windows System32 and then Drivers and then we need to paste those in and uh, replace all. So now we can shut this down 
and we can reboot Windows with the SD card uh, just as I showed in the previous video. So now I can replace the NVMe in here. So basically take that Linux one out, pop this newly written Windows 11 one in. Let's just pop that lid on. And now I can put this SD card in, as I say, from the video. This is what it's booting from. And then we can start the Windows installation. There we go. And hopefully it will pick up the NVMe drive. And it has, because it's spinning here. And then really back to the video to get Windows 11 set up. So that will install Windows 11 in the normal way. So I just checked and uh, it's on PCIe 3 speeds, uh, so the faster speed. And that's because I've changed it on the SD card. And actually it didn't affect the installation. Well, it would have made the installation faster, but it didn't adversely affect it. So that's great news. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.